You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's True Blood After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's True Blood After Show. Remember that summer of 43? Cokes were a nickel. The war had... Yes. We're going down memory lane, folks. As we all know that Bing is for doing, and we're here doing another after show on AfterBuzz TV. I'm JC, and this is True Blood Season 6, Episode 4, aptly titled, At Last. You guys, we're almost halfway through this season. I know, it's flying oh, that's by. That's crazy. We're 40% of the way through. What? You are good at What? <laughs> crazy town. On today's episode, we're going to learn, well, it seems like Eric's got a new baby vamp. Second one in, a, what, a thousand years? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And Jason and uh, Ben go through a little shaving lesson. Ooh. And, <laughs> <laughs> of course, we've got Billeth and, Jess- and Jessica doing something mm-hmm. she shouldn't have done. So we got a lot to cover. But first, let's introduce our wonderful host, starting with the lovely lady in black to my left. Wearing the black tonight, bringing back. Well, I know. I was like, I'm wearing black, too. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, guys. I'm Sarah Stratton. Hey, guys. What's up? I'm Scott Moore. And our vamp in training. Would you be a vamp or a werewolf? Go to the the camera. Let's see Steven. He's more of a werewolf because he's got that man hair. I I would say werewolf. I I guess I have the werewolf hair, but I I got the fangs. He's got the fangs. Yeah. All right. What's up, Stephen? How are you, man? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. good. Happy to be enjoying another True Blood after show here at AfterBuzz TV. Well, we got a lot in store, and I know I know you're you're coming into the fold, so we might spoil a few things along the way for you because of the stuff that went down tonight. As mm-hmm. in, at last, let's talk about in general. What did we think about tonight's episode? Oh my gosh, I can't start because I have a lot to say. Um, do you want to? I was just gonna I'm... say it's just full of like sexiness, and I'm like, finally, it felt like. Uh, back to like earlier seasons when there was a lot of hotness going on. I feel like I have a lot of mixed emotions. Like on one level, I'm like, wow, they did a really good job because everything I thought was going to happen basically didn't happen. <laughs> but also half the time I was like, this is not right. This is wrong. I'm All my hopes and dreams have been kind of been shattered. <laughs> you wanted Ben to come through the screen and say, Sarah, I have love for you. And what was with the accent? <laughs> he kept going back and forth between the southern drawl and his British accent. What's that up? That was supposed to that happen. That was supposed to happen, exactly. It's like the British... Um, accent was his true self. Mm-hmm. That is Warlow. And this Southern is part of his, like, front for Sookie. Mm-hmm. Okay, no, I'm going to stop you right there, sir, because you said his accent for Warlow. So are we accepting the fact that Ben is not Ben, that Ben is Warlow? I know you've been fighting this all season. I was still fighting this I'm still fi- I know, We're both fighting this. I think that's too like, obvious. No. Like, too I obvious. was fighting it. Like, I swore that there was going to be some realization when, um, when Niall and Jason ran into that bathroom, I thought that there was going to be some big epiphany, and maybe he was like Warlow's henchman. But the fact that he admitted to letting Niall live, mm-hmm. that kind of sealed the deal that he was Warlow, and I, I'm not, okay, I'm not okay with this. Okay, I wanted, I really wanted to talk about this. Are you guys okay that all this hype for a season and a half? Are you happy with the results? If this is Warlow, I'm, I'm with you guys. I'm going to say 98% chance that that is Warlow because <laughs> you never know. Never but, know. But are you guys happy with the payoff? I think that's too, it's too soon to say mm-hmm. because if they end it here and Sookie, like, banishes him for being Warlow, then that, that's, that was too much of a giant cliff and mm-hmm. then nothing. Mm-hmm. But if they have some recovery where Sookie and Warlow Ben Man still have some relationship happen, then I'll be happy. I think, like, if I can see some more arc there of, you know, coming to terms and developing a relationship between them, I'll like it. But well, if he just disappears or just dies, I will not be okay. Well, let's dig into this a little bit because there was a good quote with um, Sookie when, you know, at the end when it was Sookie and Ben. 
and he ended up saying, she, she asked him, of course, what do, what do you want from me? But he said, I want to be understood. And I want to tie this in, throw this at you guys a little bit. He wants to be understood. Maybe he's not this bad guy we've always thought he was. Because um, I think it was Niall, uh, Niall and Nora were talking about Lilith and that only Lilith's progeny could end Lilith. Foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. And they're doing this a lot. I, I have an article here that um, Lauren Bowles, who plays Holly, she talks about that this season more than any other season, they are giving you hints from the very beginning. So last week, do you remember last week when, um, let's see, it was Holly and Andy went to the shooting range, mm -hmm. or when they went to go shoot? There's something that's going to happen there. There's a reason oh, why obviously. she's oh, yes, learning. Yes, obviously. yes, yes, definitely. I feel like <laughs> always done that. that. That's not new to this season. Mm -hmm. Maybe more direct lines, mm -hmm. like the fact that uh, Lilith can only be destroyed mm -hmm. basically by Warlow. That is a direct thing. But the scenes and the little lines have always been there, and that's one of the reasons I love the show. So, I mean, when Holly stepped out with that gun, we all knew mm -hmm. she was coming back later. That's she, that's coming into play. So sometimes. she's going to yes. shoot someone. You okay. But but going back to what you were saying Let's too about, about tonight. Warlow or about Ben slash Warlow, uh, kind of like what you were saying. I think I would be disappointed at this moment being that this is the payoff because I feel like it was too soon, kind of too easy, too obvious of a reveal. Uh, and also what you were saying about the dark and light. He made that whole comment to Niall at that point about how he's fighting this darkness and this light at the same time, and it's every single day. Uh, so maybe there is a chance that he is potentially trying to be good, and there's more of a reason behind why he wants to get I mean, with Suki. We got a lot of layers of Ben we and did. Warlow today. I mean, we were talking about it as we watched. We know that he, he can walk in the sun. Mm -hmm. He's half vampire, mm -hmm. half fae. He somehow doesn't heal, but he has the healing powers of vampire blood. Mm -hmm. um, he wants to be understood. He was the one who let Nia live. I'm, I feel like I'd like to go on list of, like, it was like information stacked on mm -hmm. like Warlow's character profile. Mm -hmm. This is all you need to know. Like, as an actor. Just memorize these facts and develop a character. And he's got a British accent. <laughs> and then he throws the southern one on when he's playing Ben. It's, it's almost like your yeah. uh, Supernatural Match.com profile. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Warlow. I, my likes are this, this. I'm half fae, half vamp. Mm -hmm. and he can eat colloided silver, yes. or however you say yeah. it. Yeah, no, no and w you mentioned something great that I don't know if a lot of people caught, that it was just for, like, a, a split second yes. where they showed his arm. Yes, and it you, wasn't, you he, brought you that caught, up at, you you know, right that there. Story. I was like, why is he bleeding if he's a vampire? Mm -hmm. and, and why is he not healing? So that was a very good observation because I didn't even pick up on that. And it's crazy to me because obviously he's immortal and he's been alive longer than mm -hmm. basically everyone on this show. And how he survived this song if he doesn't heal. Mm -hmm. That's pretty That's remarkable. why I think that's something that we're going to have to find out, aren't we? Like wh why he doesn't heal, especially if he's like got Like where both. the lines come, mm -hmm. of, like where... It, the lines drawn for his powers. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we're, we're very heavy, like heavy Ben talk right now, and we're talking about some heavy themes, but why not lighten it up a little bit with the little scene? I'm sure uh, most of our female and some of our male audience absolutely <laughs> love the Ben and Jason scene when he healed <sighs> Jason with his vamp blood, and of course he had the, the sexual dream. And yes. Oh my gosh, I have a, f I, you guys should understand, I hate watching guys shave. Like, like I hate Gillette commercials. <laughs> they really scare me. We just lost a sponsor. Great. <laughs> no, it's so like it's so scary watching guys like. So shave it was a complete themselves. opposite reaction for you than it was for me. Then. Yeah, I, but it wasn't about the fact that he was having this dream. Is that could they be doing anything else besides shaving? Because sh like the whole time I was just like. Ah, you were. He's gonna nick him. He's gonna nick him, and of course he does. Yeah. And I was like, ah, worst fear. <laughs> <laughs> worst fear was realized. You guys are yeah, terrible. So no, I thought it was one of the, my favorite <laughs> scenes of the entire series right there. I'm Come on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because it, it harkens back to those dreams of with Suki and Eric yeah. and Bill and just those those little the threesome that they had in her <laughs> when she was dreaming about him. W what's up, Sarah? <laughs> I'm, I'm having flashbacks. And like, I, <laughs> You're love having flashbacks. See, I love so seeing is Scott. Jason play with like. <laughs> well, no, but I thought like the way it was shot too. Like I love the fact when he was first shaved, you didn't realize that it, that you know Ben was standing there. Like just the way they shot it first, it was Jason. Like oh, this is weird. Like he's playing that kind of music and he's sitting there like like this is just a bizarre scene. And then they you know pulled out and you could see it and I'm like ooh, this is hot. <laughs> I mean, I loved Jason. It was just the yeah, it was the great shaving. to see Jason. Yeah, and it was kind of a fun moment there too. And so Sometimes I'm, uh, I guess I could say I'm as thick as a wall, but 
I, I, I thought it was kind of neat, the little social commentary with Jason and Niall when he was talking about his dream, if it yeah. was okay about him yeah. dreaming about another male in his life. Yeah. And I thought that was, you know, another nod by the True Blood mm -hmm. writers whatnot about social acceptance mm -hmm. and whatnot. So, you know, I, Grandpa was all down for well, it. Well, yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> he was right on board. <laughs> so, any, anything else that we got out of the, the Sookie, Jason, and, well, okay, of course, when Niall and Jason go on their little caper to go kill Ben. Oh, my God, that was great, ben. too. That was a great moment when he when we saw Niall round yeah. those bushes heading for the motel <laughs> with the with the pipe yeah, and the like, crazy crazy hair that was fantastic. But it was like also half like runway walk. Yeah. <laughs> now what you guys were talking about it's kind of like Doctor Hugh. If he reminded me of actually Doc Brown from Back to the Future. With yeah, the you're hair right. Like with this, the crazy hair and they're goofing <laughs> off. But it reminded me actually of the capers between Jason and Andy, like mm -hmm. in season two when they're after the main ad and they're just like Scooby. They're like like the Scooby Doo mm -hmm. gang. Gee, Scoob, let's go get out. Let's get Ben. <laughs> what so, are we going to do now? Yeah, so. Oh, if that, it wasn't for you crazy kids, we could have gotten away with it too. Okay, so now is, where did Niall go? Did he go to the, the vampire phantom zone? I know, what? that's like, is this some kind of purgatory place? Where does he I go? Mean, Why was it only 20 too? years? Mm -hmm. What I got out of that was a couple, I don't remember if it was this, this season or the last season, um, it was actually Niall who talked about that zone. Mm -hmm. And he talked about the fact that um, Morlo was trapped there, and by Sookie um, using the other fairies when they did like that circle thing mm -hmm. by the bridge, that was how he knew like the signal of where the portal was. Okay. So I definitely think it's the same re like realm parallel yeah. universe that Morlo's been in. And from what I remember, I don't remember the exact line, but it was like a dark, scary place. It's like it's horrible. It's like mm -hmm. worse than when like the fairy land like crumbled mm -hmm. and it's all dark and scary. It's worse than that. Yeah, because you see Niall, who's like he, did, you know, he was. Did not he would no. did not want to go there. Yeah, so he's alive. So do you think we'll see? Will we see that, that oh, world? Do you think we're gonna ooh, get that tease? Will right? we actually see where he goes? That's a good question. I'm I was wondering, wondering about if you, that. I thought you were gonna ask if if Niall will be back. And oh, I, I hope so because uh, obviously he's, he's alive. So yeah. they left him alive for a reason. Yes, he they did. Back, right? Rutger Howard will be. Yes. Yeah. Come on, he's a scene stealer. He is. Loves him, and it's, he's gonna be the missing uh, link. I think with some of the questions that might come up. So I'm just wondering if we'll get to see this crazy. Where, you know where he disappeared off to this dimension. Or... I would like to mention also that Jason's gotten very lucky multiple times. Like yeah, it sucks that he got glamored into forgetting everything. Mm -hmm. But like there's been so many opportunities for people to kill him. Well, that's and why I said like... it last week. I'm like I think he might be one of the big ones that might go at some point because he's been so lucky. Yeah, because we're alluding to the fact that there's mm -hmm. supposed to be a big death mm -hmm. coming up halfway that's, through the yeah, season. That's why I mentioned it last week because he's was, been there way was too some lucky. Deaths today. I'm uh, sure we'll get to that. Yes, but. absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I just want to button up with um, Jason and Suki and Niall and Ben. And, oh, my question. I don't know. I'm asking if Steven knows. Great. No. Um, <laughs> what Steven was needs to catch up. The connection between Niall and Ben slash Warlow. They talked about it. Okay. He let he let Niall live twice. So he was he was around before Niall was born. Mm -hmm. So I mean, well, we already knew that Warlow massacred all of um, Niall's family mm -hmm. and left him alone. And I think what we got from this, or at least what I got from this, was that it was him battling with this vampire self that he had, mm -hmm. and he ended up losing control and kind of massacring everyone, including his own family, but still couldn't kill a child. And that was like the good part of him coming through. So that doesn't, yeah. not. doesn't that give the weight to when he told Suki, I just want to be understood? He's struggling. Well, that's what we were kind of saying earlier. Like yeah. maybe there is this good side of him that he's trying to. But shouldn't he just have told it. Suki? Shouldn't he just have come <laughs> out when she was like, I don't like people lying to me. And he was like, I want to be understood. That roundabout ways of course. is lying. Right. Lying no. by omission is <laughs> still lying. And that was my one issue on this episode, and especially when we get to Bill and the fairies, that it seemed like there, there, it's, there's a lot of runaround. Mm -hmm. And there they can just cut from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of going to point A to point Q to three, you know. I mean, I'm not saying I agree with the whole lying by omission, but at least it's kind of accurate to real life. It is. I like, like, I can't imagine that he would actually have said to her point blank, I'm Warlow, by the way. You know, like, I just... Let's see how you take this. I, yeah, I just, I, I don't see that he would have done that, regardless. Yeah, I well, agree. But well. they had, you know, we have left the huge cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. They have, I told you, a tease, a tease of the sex appeal going on. Just a tease. 
And and I do think that he's coming back, and they're going to have, like, the full-on a couple of episodes. Nice, yeah, when, when did I say that? Was that five? Yeah, we had did a better season had, five last week. I had week? six. You had six? I, I think, think I had five. Yes, we, we had a little watch. office pool. Yes. I mean, who's going to, you know, when is ho- Sookie going to hook up Yeah, mm-hmm. with Ben? I said tonight, so. You lose. It's all right. Yes. You were uh, close, though. I mean, if he died, you were be the most winner. Because uh, she started, you know, letting him get all like he was going to get some. Well, and... she is like the nebula <laughs> or whatever And then she it cut it off. With the nuclear. So you were very close. We could spend the whole, sh- we could spend the whole episode talking about oh, Ben and Sookie and how he doesn't know how to button up his shirt yet. But mm-hmm. we do have to move on and, and say hello to everyone watching us live at AfterBuzzTV.com. Chat roll. And computer's down or else I'd be talking to you guys back and forth. So, But drop us a line. If you yes. don't on AfterBuzzTV.com, make sure to go to YouTube, Stitcher, OneCast, and just let us know what you think. And, of course, we forgot to play last week, so we do have a little True, Bro- True Blood trivia for you this week Ooh, a little yay. bit later mm-hmm. on the show. True Blood trivia. So, but let's go Should going back to the show. Past. True Blood trivia, True Blood trivia. She did. Okay. She didn't. Right. Let us move on, of course, to Eric and Willa. There's a lot to talk about this relationship here mm-hmm. on the wise. And I- I'm mad. I mean, he's been around a thousand years. Why is she only the second person? Why? Why did he turn her? I mean, I know it's for strategy, maybe because of the war. But, mm-hmm. I mean, he's lived a thousand years. This isn't the first war he's been involved in. And for him just to turn, there has to be a reason why. Is he in love with her? Is he trying to get over Suki with Willa? Why? What is so special about her? Pam had to beg and plead for Eric to turn her. Okay, but you have to look at what Eric's been through in this past, like, year. Compared to, like, the thousand years he had where he was wandering the earth by himself, being, like, all powerful and mighty with Pam, now he is... In fear, like he had to deal with the authority. Now he's been dealing with like the governor. I think he's him using her as a strategic plan was enhanced by the fact that he did see qualities in her that he admired. In five minutes, and mm-hmm. I mean, one night, he he fell for her. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being. Mean, I'm not saying he fell for. Her. I don't think he's in love with her, but I think that there was. I think he was being honest with her when he was like, "You deserve to be one of us." And I made, and he says, he's like, I really thought about this decision. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Eric is a pretty straightforward character. Like, he kind of says what he thinks and what he means. So I'm not thrilled about Willa being a vampire, because I'm not really thrilled about Willa in general. But, uh,. Every week, you love the you love the guys, you hate the girls, Sarah. That's What's going not on? true. I like Suki. We can go to the tape. Because she's your BFF, and any other girls are just getting like in the Jessica. way. They're all, you know. I like Tara. I like Pam. I love Pam. Okay, therefore. fine. All right, fine. You just I, don't, I just don't like. Daphne, I don't you don't know, like the new girls. Point. You don't like the new girls. You're yeah, Daphne in your trust. Okay. <laughs> well said. So, but I mean, Scott, are you, do you agree? I mean, it just seemed a little. Am I missing something? Why would he turn Willa just like, you no, know? I, I thought the same thing. I mean, before he said it was the second one, I was thinking, oh, wait, she's only going to be the second one. And I didn't really quite get it either why it was so soon besides the, you know, general strategic, like, I'm going to do that because to get back at his dad and make, or make, make her dad think that. needed more filler before they. Yeah, like, that. that's how I took it is it just felt a little too quick. But I, I mean, get it. I do, I do get it. I think there's maybe something there that we're going to. Or knowing True Blood, character. they probably like made like five other scenes mm-hmm. of, a, of a lot of footage, and then with the condensing, yeah. they probably. Well, have I, and I think we'll learn. We'll stuff. we'll figure out like as it goes along, maybe what her use is going to be in this. Besides just this, you know. Well, right now one. it's like Miss Sarah Preacher Woman is wants to send her to camp. Yeah, I and mean, Sarah's the baddie here. Yeah, she is. I have some theories about Miss Sarah. And they are? Well, first of all, it was so obvious that Sarah was hooking up with the governor when she walked in her, like, sexy little robe. And I was like, with the drink. I'm like, from Reverend, Reverend Newland to uh-huh. the governor, I was like, you have an interesting taste in yeah. men. And Jason yes, was thrown do. in there. But, but it makes sense. But she I moved up, at least. She, I'm, you know, moved from a reverend to a governor. I don't know. I think key moment was when Sarah was like, there's something I have to tell you. Yeah. What is that? She's pregnant. That's what I was thinking too. That was the obvious one, but I'm like, is it going to be that obvious, or is it going to be something else? But but I, I mean, but she did allude to her whole thing when she saw Reverend Newland. You know, when she saw him, she said, you know, I'm going into politics, and you know, she made it sound like she was 
kind of yeah. on this like evilish path of power and so do you think she so, may usurp she might take out the governor because of now that will is a vampire and you can see him slightly weakened he's vulnerable right now i mean is there a way i mean could she start a revolution herself well, I think Governor Man's going to have, like, an emotional battle with himself over what to do with Willa. Yeah. And I think Sarah's going to try and position it as, like, you have a new child. Yes. Let go of your old one. Okay. Yeah, like, versus, you know, her being a vampire, which which it was a good point that you brought up that, that vulnerability, because we actually saw that with him when he went into the house and realized that they weren't there. And, you know, he punched the wall and everything. You actually saw that moment where, like, he really was upset that mm -hmm. she wasn't around. And that was a total contrast yeah. to, like, last week when mm -hmm. we saw him fake crying mm -hmm. on the phone. Yeah. So did you like that? Did you like that, that he got angry? No, I did like that, actually, because it did kind of, especially now, seeing her being turned into a vampire, kind of, it'll make sense to see that he does really care about her. A little bit more human. Yeah. Not it gave so, that like, human Exactly. So I actually really government. did enjoy that that kind of vulnerable moment that he had there in the it, house. It makes him a more well-rounded character mm -hmm. where actually we might actually start to like him. You never know. We don't. It's episode four, so you don't know his trajectory, yeah. what's going to happen. And again, yeah, and what's led him. We kind of learned in the last episode kind of what's led him on this, this vampire hunt because of his ex-wife and everything being with a vampire. But... It was good to see that vulnerability, I thought. It definitely helped give that extra layer and kind of made it more realistic And you him get, just being this crazy powers-hungry guy. Well, no. I was just going to say, I was just thinking, we're going to have a whole party going on at this camp. I mean, it's kind of coming to the point that Bill's vision is on its way mm -hmm. to being true. I mean, in this episode alone, we have Pam, we have Willa, mm -hmm. we have Ginger, mm -hmm. um, when they took... So, and that's a great point. I wanted to bring mm -hmm. up Ginger really quickly because they said something about it. Sounded like, do they have an ability to retrieve humans' memories? I thought about that when they captured Ginger, and I thought maybe they might. They have so many experiments, they could do so many things. And like unglamoring? Possibly. Mm. I mean, they've figured out the eye contact. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I mean, there's no kind of limits what they yeah, can do. Yeah, maybe there is something. I just was thinking they were just putting her there because she was a vampire sympathizer. So yeah, something. like. Okay. Sympathizer, you know, so they were putting her there with them. Well, there's a party going on yeah. at a camp. Mm hmm. So, not no, that fun of a party. But. So I'm just trying to think, you know, like with Willa and Eric, I mean, mm -hmm. Sookie all over again. Could it be? Could we see? Could. Are you thinking like love interests yes. for Eric and Willa? Absolutely. Oh, I, I think that too. I definitely think that. Yeah. You, you didn't think. You no. didn't think that? No, no I did. I definitely read into that because of the, part of the reason why. He wanted to, to turn her. I think there's more to it than just the obvious, like, let's do it to get back at, at Daddy. Since he came in through the window the, two episodes ago, I yeah, that's... I, I don't know. I still see it. I mean, I feel like she's on the same page as Ginger, and that both of them are kind of, like, into Eric, but I don't think Eric's into them. I, oh gosh, I want to uh. reveal something so deep. It's something from the books, and I don't know if people are watching it. And it just, it seems to me maybe they're foreshadowing for later down, down maybe even next season, because Sookie ends up with one of the characters in the books, because the book's wrapped up. Mm -hmm. and, but she didn't end up with who you might think. And so I'm going, yeah, I hate mm. to be so cryptic. No, I, don't want, no. I don't want to ruin it for anybody. No, it doesn't ruin it. But, that, but this whole episode to me was full of this sexual tension. That's what I'm It kind of had, every single character almost was having... These, these things going, you know, they were just dealing with a lot of different emotions. My biggest and problem in this episode was a lot of characters that I don't want having sexual <laughs> tension having sexual tension. I, I was, and Willa and Eric, one of the ones. I'm, I'm well, then, well like, then, let's no. talk. Let's talk about someone that you were rooting to connect, like Sam and nope, Nicole. No, nope. <laughs> no, come no. on, it was perfect no. segue. No, but no. let's let's move on to the Wolfpack, Sam and. That was fun. <laughs> we were watching it though, and we're both like, yeah. And you're like, no, I couldn't. No, <laughs> is it is it realistic? Luna died two days ago, maybe three days ago. No. I was like, it is for a guy. <laughs> girlfriend has died. He has like he's carrying around her dead girlfriend's child. And now all of a sudden this like twenty year old college girl that can I think you're just bothered because she's a twenty year old college yeah. girl. Hate to interrupt. She's like he's he's too young or she's too young for him. That's what you're thinking, right? I agree with that too, but love has no bounds. But I get I, I come on, I was like I mean, they were both going through something there with losing loved ones. I'm not I'm okay with age. I'm okay so, with Sookie and Warlow, and there's like a millennium gap there, or something. But you don't notice the age in Warlow as much, though. Okay. Ageism, ageism. Okay, so what? Ha <laughs> so are we okay? 
Yeah, I would have loved to. Have, we had Janine on last week. Yeah. It would have been great to see that go down because I mean, it is okay. I agree with the. I agree with both of you. You know that that it's too soon and it's wrong. Yes, it's <laughs> two days. Yeah. Maybe yeah. three. And, and maybe. And her and Nicole, boyfriend just died too. Yeah. Her boyfriend yeah. died yeah. the night before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the way he was written, no offense to the I, it was just the way he was written, he sucked. He did. Come on. There was nothing cool about him. He you know mm-hmm. Okay, it, okay. But regardless, you're regardless, right, that's what I'm saying. They were as losing a loved good ones. Girlfriend, she should have like mourned. <laughs> she just waited her through the appropriate boyfriend. mourning period. The guy <laughs> turned into a horse for her. I don't know about you, but if you know, a girl he turns into a horse for me. Ooh, horsey. That could you're yeah. right, and, and you and, almost and, just died, and everyone yeah. you loved just died. But and he I rescues you on the horse, like you know. old man. <laughs> you notice that we're talking about the wolf pack, Sam and Nicole, because, and we're talking about this awkward kiss. Because do you really think there was a lot of a, a lot of storyline for the wolf pack this episode? No. Is there a lot for them to do? No, there wasn't. That's why they weren't really. That's why they weren't really around. It it, it bothers me because I'm like, what are they going to do? How are they gonna? How are they gonna bring them back? How is everyone gonna cross paths again as they do every season? I don't see it. I I just hope it does. I don't really see it either, and I hope that they don't try and really force it mm-hmm. to the point that it just it feels forced, like you're saying, like exactly. it's exactly yeah. because the clips we got today, I feel like were ten second flashes, and it was like, oh, I smell her. Great, like. Yeah. Congratulations. We literally could have just seen the Sam one. We didn't really need to see I'll see it in the pack. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's hard for me to say because I love <laughs> the wares. But um, yeah, let us know if we're miss. Are we did we miss a line or something? I know all I got was in a very aggressive I'll see it. I'm pack master. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the whole it. Ricky him stubbornness. That's that's more on that more of her kind maybe, of mm-hmm. yeah, maybe we can get someone from the wolf pack to explain it to us in a future episode. I'm just saying. That'd be nice. Mm. That'd be Wouldn't nice. So, yeah, because anything, I mean, nothing. I didn't get anything from Martha, mm-hmm. any, you know, not even Jackson, which I think we saw the preview for next week, and it seems like all Seed and Jackson are going to go at it. Yeah. And I think I think it's okay that we didn't necessarily need to have a lot from them this episode, because there was a lot of other things going on. Well, so I think that was okay. Well, let's move on to that. Scott, let's talk about uh, the, the, the fairies and Bill and his master plan with... Synth- synthesizing, I could never say that word. Synthesizing their blood. Yes. And how the girls turn. Okay. How did the girls. Okay, they turned into young adults, oh, you know, as we saw when once they turned off the lights. Yeah. But how did they have the wherewithal to drive a car? How did they have. How are they so well versed oh, in. Oh, see, I thought they were driving the car badly. And I was like. I did too. I was like, this is. Good job, yeah. filmers, for yeah. making them poor Make them drive car bad. drivers. I really yeah. like that I, detail. I like that detail, too. And I also, I loved when they, you know, got a little bit older and they're, like, talking about their boobs and they're like, oh, I've got boobs now. I also like <laughs> and the other one's like, mine are sexier than yours. Like, it was great. No, I loved it. And I love they also, um, did you notice when they walked in to um, the Little Mart where yeah. we got our awesome. re- returning cameo, yes. a guy from episode one, season yes, one. Yes, that was so great. But the girl, the last one, like couldn't walk on her heels, yes. right? And I was like, I I love little deals. I, I thought, love those little details too. I really appreciated that, and the fact that you know they were older and they're like, okay, now let's try to take advantage of this and let's go out and be silly and try to buy 30. beer. Yeah, before they get too old, they want to have their little crazy moment. So I think that made sense because they are growing up. They're just growing up faster than humans would be so they're going through those same kind of are they also feelings at a quicker like pace emotional growth that's what i'm mm-hmm. saying we you know one, oh that's not explained i mean they just they happen to be 18 now yeah they don't have the very deep layers you're right there's no but i don't know how you could to justify ex- it i don't know how you could do that in, in the short amount of time that you're with these characters so you have to kind of just suspend that a little bit and just keep going well, yeah. what, what, what I like about the little things about that? I was gonna say, what about with Jessica and Bill as and when they arrive to the liquor mart mm-hmm. and to talk to the girls? Did you notice like Bill seems to be putting Jessica and he's sending her out on like a lot more missions? Not like last week he had her dress up like as a little little mm-hmm. harlot and whatnot. He would have never done that when he was Bill. Yeah, but now as Bill, she's just like a little soldier for him. But I feel like that was Jessica stepping up and asking I, for that throughout the season. Like, mm-hmm. she's really put herself out there that Bill's all that she has. And she asked him. She was like, I want to help you. Yeah. I mm-hmm. Like, she wants to be involved. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I think she wants to put herself out there and help. And, um, I, you know, I think it was it was good for her to have the chance for her to try to 
get the girls to go and party and everything. I thought it worked well because, I don't know, he kind of seems like the creepy older guy, like, hanging out in the parking lot. And you're thinking, why is that guy out there at, like, 2 in the morning? Like, he, you know, it's like, so it was kind of nice to see her be able to come in and be the fun, oh, yeah, let's go and uh, let's go party, you know, come on back. So are they dead? I told you, three are dying and one's staying alive. I'm sick of Oh, you're going with, with three and one. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hmm. I'm, I'm going to tell you they're alive. I don't. Yeah, I don't think they're dead either. You know why? Because they would shrivel up. They would turn into the old like fairy. No, they're half fairy. Oh, you're right. They might. I don't I'm think. I'm rethinking about Saki's yeah. grandfather. Yeah, See? I don't think. I don't think they're dead yet. I don't think they're dead yet. I mean, it'll be a good much. point that if they are dead, that they didn't shrivel up and turn mm-hmm. into dust. Now, the, is the reason why like Bill is using their blood, of course, to give to to vamps to arm them for the humans for the upcoming war so that they, they let's say if they get shot with uh, Governor Burrell's bullets mm-hmm. those UV bullets mm-hmm. nothing will happen to them right um i think that's a really good point i didn't even think of it that way i was thinking more of them just being able to be in the sun mm-hmm. um i but to I arm think... the army so now they're well that is a good point cuz i was kind of thinking along your way too of like them they'd be out in the sun maybe they wouldn't be noticed as being vampires is what exactly. i had kind of and thought they in my be initial able to do the curfew anymore yeah, i yeah i thought but... as the initial but as the initial thing, it would throw them off because they wouldn't be able to tell who's vampire and who's not if they're walking out in the sun. But if they can stay in the sun, then they should be able to stay in the UVs. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's it's, just... Yeah. So they're both... Well, is it even going to work, guys? The, well, the, the vampire... Just, being able to make the blood? I mean, right now, it doesn't seem like it. I mean, that's what we got. We got the, the blood deteriorates yeah. and, as soon and, as it leaves its... And the um, chemical stuff, The he couldn't even figure out the chemical composition of some of the things that were in the fairy blood. So he so would need, a, need much... a fairy pet. No, he would need a much more powerful fairy, perhaps Warlow. Well, or Ben. I thought that it was just the blood couldn't really exist outside of the body. Right, they, they mm-hmm. did say that. So that within an hour, it's, it's regular human mm-hmm. blood. So, Which makes, which, I mean, I was going to say makes sense, like it's real or whatever, but it does in a way kind of make sense in the sense, sense if you're a fairy and you have this special composition. Again, like he was saying, Dr. Takahashi was saying, there's things he's never even seen before. It makes sense that they would go away pretty quickly if they weren't. You know, in a body. So, so did we get any movement at all with any of these storylines tonight? Like now, because basically, Bill and and Doctor Takahashi, mm-hmm. it's basically what he said the last episode. I need to synthesize the blood. Now he was doing that. This, I mean, I just didn't see it. It is slow, but it did because I think we saw that it wasn't going to work the way Bill was hoping. Yeah, I feel like we needed every step. Like so we it was needed Suki to step. turn it down. We needed him to kidnap the girls, mm-hmm. and then we kind of needed it not to work right away. He was mm-hmm. like. Ugh. I, I got do, it right here. I could do the magic blood, no mm-hmm. problem. Yeah. Do you think maybe it was more of a setup? So now for next week's confrontation between Andy and Bill, because Andy kept saying a lot of things that he couldn't be a cop anymore, and it sounds like to me he's turning mm-hmm. into this vigilante. Oh, I did not. I did not take it that way. Okay. I took it as people who say like you always hear in other TV shows mm-hmm. like once a cop gets too personal into it, it's always the other people pushing them out. Like. You need to take a time out. You're too close to this case. You need to back off. Okay. And in this, it was I thought it was just Andy pl- putting that role on himself and being like, yeah, I no, can't no, handle absolutely. this. Absolutely, yeah. It's just too close. It's too personal. It, it, I need to step back. Um, oh, okay. yeah. That him being the parent kind of thing. I, I did take it. What you were saying is because that is true. Like you're saying, if a parent's too close to the situation, they have to, or anyone for that matter, it's sort of like you rec- recuse yourself from the situation. It's like if you have a personal connection, that's. Pretty much how I took it, but um, but yeah, I think he's going to go a little overboard with uh, yeah, because there's no here. emotion. I mean, because now he's got the personal emotion involved. And yes, which logic goes out the mm-hmm. door. Especially. We have Andy mad, and I think we have Doctor. How do you pronounce o- over- it? Overlark. No. Oh, Ta- Overlark. Uh, Taka- <laughs> Takahashi. 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 Takahashi's mad too. So we've got one in the basement yeah. who's mad, and one outside who's mad. So are you thinking maybe like Dr. Takahashi might have like a he might concoct something to free himself? I'm just waiting what... for him to like put silver in the blood and be like, here, put this in you. Yeah, but they would happens. smell it a mile away. Not true. No. Think about um, what's her name? Suki Warlow. No. Authority woman Nan. Salome. Um, Nan. Oh, Salome. Like she drank the whole vial of silver blood because she was too mentally excited. Okay, and that she, even that though could it was... happen to Bill. Okay. All right. Who so knows? I don't know. We're predicting a bunch of stuff here. In overall, an episode that a lot of stuff happened and a lot of didn't happen, yeah. you know. But any final thoughts on I wrote that we might have missed? I wrote, seriously, whatever that meant. And then I wrote, it was a good episode, but I don't like it. Why? 
Well, because one, I did not like Sam hooking up with that girl. <laughs> that was a big no no for me. Two, I kind of want Ben and Suki to end up together forever. <laughs> So I really didn't know if I wanted him to be Warlow. I don't know. I want Ben to hook up with Jason now. <laughs> I can't control these two. There's a lot of things that I was like, this is not on my checklist of what I want <laughs> this to This doesn't work. So basically, is it the writing? What it, What's going on? The direction? What do you not feel? No, I think, like, looking at it, like, Aside they're from... doing good. Like, it's always mm -hmm. a good show. It's well written. I just, like, plan out how I want the show to happen, and they're really deviating <laughs> from what I want. That yes, so absolutely. I get on it. At that level, I'm like, no, this is not my predictions, so I'm not okay with it. But it's obviously a great show, and I'm going to keep watching. They didn't do anything that I was like, ah, I can't watch this anymore. I, I actually really enjoyed the, I, I think it just had more of the lighthearted moments that we've had in previous seasons that I thought came back, and also a lot of the hot kind of sexiness moments came back as well. So I really enjoyed that. Um, and uh, I, I really, really actually enjoyed this episode, but I get what you were saying about it sort of felt like a half step forward in a lot of these plot lines. It didn't feel like you got a really great resolution. You just got to know a little bit. and Except for Ben. Almost had to. Yeah, Ben was the, yeah. Ben was the biggie this big episode. One. Yeah, last, absolutely. At last. At last. found out who Orlo is. Oh, I'll say and that I mean, I guess the, the fans were pretty correct. Well, everyone's been hollering that it was Warlow. We were, but we were hoping because it just seemed too of an obvious. It's too obvious. Too obvious. I still say And it, it still feels too obvious, but I mean, I've been I saying, agree. I, we'll see. We'll see. I've always said it wasn't him, but I felt like the one line mm -hmm. that he was the one who let um, Nia live, is there anyone else been around that long? And he knew, and he, yeah, he kind of, he knew too much, too. It just, it was, All right, yeah. well, And there's so much in the fact that we, ha we've had Ben, or Warlow, man, whatever, positioned as Suki's new love. And last week we saw Bill reject Suki completely, mm -hmm. and simultaneously it's we're finding out that Warlow's the only one who can like lead Lilith slash Bill to the sun. So we've got Bill slash Lilith and Ben slash Warlow, and it makes sense. And they're all surrounding Suki, so mm -hmm. it, it plots out right. That it does. Ben takes Bill, sends <laughs> him to the sun, he's gone, he can be with Sicky. Voila! I'm not sold on that <laughs> one. I'm just saying, and I don't want to go into I'll save it for next week. So, with that That's said, a good one, though. let's move on to okay. any news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. What do you got for us, Sarah Stratton? I just have some little things. Um, so, just three quick stories. Number one. Our Mr. Al Seed, Mr. Joe, just bought a new house for $1.8 million in the Hollywood Hills. So that's pretty close to here, guys. <laughs> He's like our neighbor. He's your yeah. neighbor, Sarah. <laughs> Wait, that's so true. Interesting. Um, Maybe you can get him on the show. Yeah. There he goes. <laughs> knock on his door. Hi. Just go on your morning jog and go knock on the door and you're going by. So. <laughs> I guess happy house hunting to him and congrats on his new home. Hopefully we can get invited to a housewarming party. Yeah, here we go. And then I like that. Also, last week, um, you guys need to look this up. HBO Andrew Rudd released a clip of all of the same sex scenes that they've had um, to celebrate the Supreme Court's Doma ruling. So nice. check it out. It's online. It's pretty easy to find. Just like Google. You know, Doma, HBO, great. Also, <laughs> finally, um, Valerie Pettiford, who's a Broadway star, she was nominated for Tony for Fosse, I believe. Mm. She is going to be making an appearance later this month. She has like a two episode arc. So interesting to see that. I'm hoping mm -hmm. she sings. I mean, I don't know how they're going to fit uh, a musical number into the hope. true one, but. Well, they had that one, <laughs> the, the Elder Faye from yes. last season that was singing and dancing mm -hmm. a little bit. Ah. Let's bring let's I'm let's get her to sings. sing. I want some I want some good live singing in this I do show. Too. Let's make that happen. They could do a musical number. I've, they did that in a, on American Horror Story, where one of the episodes this past season was they they broke out into like this big song and dance number. It came out of the blue, so who knows? And, and it was refreshing, kind of change of pace, kind of throw you off a little bit, which we need. You know, something you different. Do. It'd so. be hard. It would be very hard to make that work Come on, on the show. You could see I'll see <laughs> tap dance. <laughs> He, he does have a dance background. I mean, Magic Mike. Come Where, on now. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see that? I missed that one. Of course he did. 
I watched Pretend it twice. Like <laughs> now, any, any other news in gossip? That's all for this week. Okay, I also get it. I, last week we did not have a trivia. It was so action packed with Janina. So, gonna make it up to you guys this week. And we're gonna have a little True Blood trivia. As we know, the grand prize winner this season is going to get a poster with all the signatures from all the guests we have on the After Buzz this season. So, this week we're playing something called Who Said What? Bum, bum, bum. On our trivia. And all I'm going to give you, because they, they, you guys are so good, so I'm making it kind of hard. Cryptic. Mm-hmm. Slightly. Cryptic. All right, you have to guess this line, which character said it, for one for one entry. But if you can tell me when it was said, we'll give you two entries. This I is said it this week. Okay, okay, let me read it. You want to read it? <laughs> I'm just glad I don't have to actually answer them. I'm like, they're so tired. Okay. The line is, I can feel you right now. I feel like that line has to have been said like 80,000 times. <laughs> it sounds like it. Do you guys want me to give you a clue? How it will make it a little easier? Sure. It was said this season. There. Can you repeat the line? The line is, I can feel you right now. I can feel you right oh. now. I can feel you right now. Okay. 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 If you can give me who said it, and if you can tell me when, like time code it, I will give you two. Time code it. <laughs> Just or like what scene? Wow. So with that said, oh, predictions. Any predictions for next week? Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Come on. Now we put on the spot. Steven's Steven got the, the music going. I know he's ready now. Steven's got the music You're going. After Buzz TV. Warlow Ben, whatever his name is, is not dying. He's not dying. Not yet. No. He's going like, to no. run out. He's going to use the super speed that we've never seen him use yet, and he's going to run out. Scott, what do you got? Wow us. Wow us with your prediction. Because I got a doozy. I got a good one. Well, my own dream would be for Ben and Jason to hook up, so. Okay, so Scott thinks of uh, <laughs> Jason and Ben hook up. And. That's Preggers, what I'm hoping. Sarah's Preggers. Yes. Sarah's Preggers. That, yes, that's. And, and the fairies are still alive. At least the one. The girls. Is. One. one. You're going with one. You're going with 25%. One Throwing out the math out there again. I've been saying that Andy was going to die. That was my prediction. However, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm changing. I'm struggling. I'm changing my prediction. I think it's going to be. And don't hate me, guys, because I hate I hate this na- saying this right now. Lala. Big, Lala. You no. put that bad juju no. into the I'm air. Gonna, and I'm going to throw no. this up so the fans can see. Look no. at the scene today with Sam and Lala mm-hmm. when he said it was almost like they were saying goodbye. To And he said, watch yourself. Protect yourself. Watch your back. That's true. It's true. So I'm just happen. saying that. So no, I, I will think not let that happen. I will Lala's let, done something. Not let it happen. That's some bad juju you just You are. I'm not going to let it happen. Number, one. Number two, no. if Andy dies, you do not get to say I told you mm-hmm. so. <laughs> well, I'm torn between the two. No, because you, you took that one back. I didn't take no. Yeah, you did take it back. You did. You took it back. Yeah. After Buzz TV You're Nation, done now. let us know happens. if we can mm-hmm. take it back. But before you we go any further, where can they find you, Jay, uh, Scott? I want to call you Jason. Scott, where can they find you? They can find me at sman80, S-M-A-N, 80 on the old Twitters and for the season finale of Defiance tomorrow night right here. And Sarah, what other shows are you doing for After Buzz? Uh, You can see me on Tuesdays with Teen Wolf. Nice. Steven, and tell us about where can we find you besides Match.com. Oh, thanks, JC. (laughs) I didn't know if that was a dig or... uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, you can find me on Graceland, Dexter, Twisted, and Get Out Alive with Bear Grylls. The premiere is tomorrow. Ooh, Ooh, that's a quite a list. Can't wait to see that. You can find me hosting The Bachelorette tomorrow. Kind of love. Kind of like the same thing. Kind of like this. Yes. We have some... We got stuff to talk about. (laughs) All right, so for Sarah, Scott, Steven, I'm JC. We're True Blood. We'll see you next time. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.